Welcome and thank you to the Secretary of the State, Denise Merrill, for hosting this very important press conference. My name is John Murs. I'm the co-chair of the Connecticut Nonprofit Human Services Cabinet, affectionately known as the Nonprofit Covenant. You say, well, what is that? We are 20 member associations and organizations representing over 800 provider organizations within those associations, serving over 500,000 residents with our services annually. Today, we are here to launch the Voter Engagement and Education Initiative. Simply put, and we will hear from Lisa in a little bit more about what we want to do, but it is to engage disenfranchised individuals set, such as ex-offenders, domestic violence victims, individuals with disabilities, and our friends who are homeless. And we want to educate them on their basic right to vote. Encourage these individuals to be informed about electoral choices and the laws governing their voting and election laws. So our friend here, Denise, has only been in her position for four years, but has moved mountains uh, in that time, including online registration and same-day registration. One of your staff said it's only taken 30 years to do that. You've managed to put the bow on that deal in your four years. Denise uh, is in charge of a list of processes. If you want to know all that she does, go to her website. Uh, but the bottom line is she's all about more transparency and more accountability. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you my friend, the friend of voters and an Oscar Knight supporter, <laughs> the Secretary of State, Denise Merrill. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. I'm glad you mentioned that. That's a great event, by the way. Uh, well, thank you all, and good afternoon. Thanks for being here, and uh, this is a great initiative. I'm thrilled to uh, support it. Um, it's a busy day today here at the Capitol. You know, we're winding down the session, and uh, we'll keep this as short as possible so that we can get back to the work upstairs. Um, but there's also an election coming up this year. We have 187 legislative seats on the ballot this fall, plus congressional represent representatives and statewide constitutional offices governor, lieutenant governor, so sooner than you think it will be decision time for Connecticut voters. One of my biggest goals, as John has indicated, as Secretary of State has been to increase voter participation. And while we do have about two million registered voters in Connecticut, we also know that up to a third of those citizens who are eligible to vote are not even registered to vote. I find this very problematic, and I hope we can do all we can to reach out to those voters who have dropped out of the system or through barriers real or imagined are not voting or registering to vote. Many of those eligible citizens who are not registered would be interested, I think, in registering and voting. Uh, and they're served by our state's wonderful network of human service nonprofits, many representatives are, of whom are in this room. Many residents of homeless shelters, for example, are eligible voters. Connecticut citizens with HIV are eligible voters. The disabled or those with developmental disabilities or those in group homes are possibly eligible voters. Clients of soup kitchens and the programs to end hunger in Connecticut are also eligible voters in many cases. The list goes on and on. Many don't even know that the right to vote extends to them. Any U.S. citizen who has reached the age of 18 can cast a ballot in a general election. And 17-year-old citizens can vote in our August primary as long as they'll turn 18 on or before election day, November 4th, 2014. This is just a review. So everyone realizes this has been a long history of extending the franchise in this country to every citizen over the age of 18 in this country. So. I'm excited to join this effort. We want to hear your voices, all of your voices in the fall. I want every eligible citizen to register to vote and every eligible voter to cast a ballot. That's the goal. We're talking about a population here served by Connecticut human service nonprofits that may number up to 500,000 people. 
It's an enormous number of our population in Connecticut. Now, not all are eligible voters, but where we can identify an eligible voter, we will work together to make sure they are educated on how to register and where and how to vote when the time comes. You know, my, my office looked into this issue of why people participate in a society or not. We did something called the Civic Health Index a couple of years ago. And one of the things we found, and I think one of the most profound and interesting points that was made, was that people participate in things, whether it's an association, a group, or voting, if they're asked in, if they feel welcome, if they feel part of things. You know, most of us got into what we're doing because someone asked us somewhere along the line. And I think this extends to this population in particular. Um, and so through this voter registration drive, we're asking those served by these nonprofits to participate. We're asking you in. And because of some of the progressive reforms that we were just mentioned, uh, registering to vote has never been easier in Connecticut. So, for example, if you have a Connecticut driver's license, all you have to do is go online, www.sots, secretary of the state, .ct.gov, and you can register to vote on a home computer, a laptop, or even a smartphone. This is new, and it's remarkably easy. Now, we know that many of the population we're talking about may not have driver's licenses, so this isn't going to work for everyone, but it certainly makes it easier. And that's why over the last three years also, my office has extended training and presentations on how to register voters to more than 500 different nonprofits in Connecticut already. Oftentimes, when eligible voters in vulnerable populations receive services, it is the human connection. You are the connection to these populations. This is the very personal asking in that you are going to be doing. So I think it's very valuable that the human service workers caring for those in need be equipped with information on how someone can register to vote and how that person can vote. When someone participates in an election, they make a statement that they have a say in choosing their government. They own a piece of it. Their voice can be heard. So as President Lyndon Johnson said after he signed the Voting Rights Act of 1965, interestingly, just about 50 years ago, and by the way, this Law Day, which has been celebrated throughout the state this week, the theme is every vote matters and the rule of law. Lyndon Johnson said, the vote is the most powerful instrument ever devised by man for breaking down injustice and destroying the terrible walls which imprison men because they are different from others. So on this 50th anniversary of the enactment of the Civil Rights Act, and I think we need to rededicate ourselves to preserving these civil rights and be constantly vigilant in protecting them for everyone because they can be taken away. And now I would welcome uh, statements from our other partners in this effort, uh, and I couldn't be more excited about uh, what they're planning to do. So thank you very much. So to give you an idea, thank you so much. We'll hear from Lisa Tepper Bates about uh, why and how we're doing what we propose to do. Jose Realm Ramos, uh, consumer. And then finally, George Pillsbury, the founder and executive director of an organization cleverly named Nonprofit Vote. So without further ado, Lisa Tepper Bates. Thank you. Thank you very much to the Secretary of State for her support to this initiative. Uh, the clients that we represent and that we serve every day through our associations and through the many organizations that our associations represent are longtime, if not lifetime, Connecticut residents, and the majority of them are eligible voters, but many do not exercise that right. Nonprofit human service providers can help educate eligible voters who we serve about that right to vote, about voter registration, and about the voting process, as the Secretary of State has said. Not only can we do that, but we do believe that it's a responsibility we have to our clients to do that work. For us, this will include informing our clients about how and where to register to vote, the rules that govern eligibility to vote in Connecticut, requirements for voter identification, and the deadlines that they'll need to observe during the election process, including for registration prior to primaries and general elections. 
We plan to provide these voter registration services through voter registration drives, through direct services at our service providers, and through assistance on site to our clients when needed to help them complete the forms to register. To help our nonprofits do this work, we plan to provide training and information, uh, including on voter registration and the procedures on the new election laws. We are very pleased to have the assistance and the resources in this effort of nonprofit vote, and I'd like to recognize in particular Liza Andrews of the Connecticut Coalition Against Domestic Violence, who has really led our work to develop toolkits for our providers to help them do this work and to observe the rules that govern it in Connecticut. We're also hoping in this effort to help our clients become better informed about their electoral choices, including through holding candidate forums and by encouraging candidate appearances at the events that our many nonprofits hold between now and the election. We are proud and we are pleased to have the opportunity to work with our clients and encourage them to exercise this most important of all American rights. I'd now like to introduce Jose Ramos. He would like to speak on the importance of voting from the perspective of a consumer. Mr. Ramos is a client of Hands On Hartford, the Hartford affiliate of the Hands On Network. Hands On Network is an innovative international and rapidly growing 58 city alliance of volunteer organizations that promotes and facilitates community engagement and service learning. So I think we all appreciate voter education is an important part of service learning. Mr. Ramos. Thank you very much for having me here and giving this opportunity to be um, standing in the front over here um, talking about um, voting and um, non-profits agencies like the one that I live um, and I'm more than happy to be living there because I've been living there for 40 years and I don't have no complaints about it. I have a little bit something really down here I don't want to forget. <laughs> and it is why it is important to vote. It said voting is a privilege for to have your voice heard. It gives you the power to choose who best represents you or your interests. It's important for all types of people who can have their voice heard. People with HIV, cancer, different diseases, recent inmates. It's especially difficult, difficult for people who are recently incarcerated to vote. People are denied their right to vote, have no voice. Nonprofits remember those who are forgetting and allow them to have their voice heard. <clears throat> Nonprofit importance. It was an active in civil participation back in Puerto Rico back in 1980. I lost my right to vote in the late 90s when I became incarcerated. When I get out of incarceration, I went to a shelter and then to a nursing home. When I get to Peter Retreat, uh, house of Hanson Hartford, they helped me get re-registered re and eventually get reinstated. They educate me on the election process and empower me to vote again. I have been active voters since the early 2000s, I have been an advocate for people to register. Registration is important, especially for those just getting out of incarceration. They lost their hope and identity in society. Being active in voting helps people be integrated in society and contribute to the community for the better. Thank you. So Jose is one of our success stories and we hope to have many, 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 many more if we are successful in our initiative. So here to inspire us uh, with a few words is George Pillsbury. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Secretary Merrill, and thank you, Connecticut Nonprofits. I'm glad to be here. I'm, uh, again, George Pillsbury, Executive Director of Nonprofit Vote. We're a national center of training and resources to help nonprofits promote voting and engage with candidates on a nonpartisan basis around elections. 
and we're a partner of the National Association of Secretary of States for the Nonprofit Sector. You know, democracy and voting is like a gym membership. It doesn't work unless it's exercised. So we salute the Connecticut Nonprofits and the Nonprofit Human Service Cabinet for their, today, for their civic reach, for exercising their civic reach, community trust and social missions to encourage active citizenship and participation in our democracy. Uh, I want to quickly also recognize the exemplary work of the Connecticut Secretary of State, who I've had the privilege to work with. You know, Connecticut's known for a lot of great things. You know, basketball, of course. <laughs> but most recently, leading the nation in its health website and sign up for insurance, you know, public policy initiatives like that. Well, I do hope you all of you know that Connecticut is also known nationally as having one of the greatest Secretary of States. She's really a leader among her peers. She's co-chair of the National Secretary of State of Voter Participation Committee, uh, a leader of National Voter Registration Day, which will happen this September, it's her third annual. And uh, also the you know, new programs mentioned before, like online voter registration and programs like this one today that have moved Connecticut into the top 10 states on the election performance index of the Pew Charitable Trust. So, that's, so we congratulate Connecticut for that. Um, you know, voting is a healthy habit. 